guys, uh, so let's begin um, lower limb examination. So there are a lot of things then uh, that you have to do when you're doing the lower limb examination. So uh, you might have to do it uh, depending on which scenario you are doing. For example, uh, if it is a diabetic foot, diabetic station, and uh, many patients come for a diabetic annual review. So in that station, you might be doing lower limb examination. Alcoholic foot, again, the patient might have some vitamin deficiencies, and that's the reason you might be doing lower limb examination. Uh, you have got um, peripheral artery disease, acute limb ischemia. So all those stations uh, you might be having where uh, you are expected to do lower limb examination. Right, so there are a few things uh, that you will be needing for this. Uh, cotton wrist neuropain reflex hammer tuning fork, that is 128 hertz frequency, right? So when you're doing the hearing test, you need the tuning fork that is of 512 frequency. But when you're doing the lower limb examination, upper limb examination, and you're checking the vibration, you need the tuning fork with the frequency of 128. Right. So now when you're doing the examination, first you're doing the inspection. <clears throat> so make sure you're doing the good inspection. And you know, in the exam, uh, uh, you're not having a real patient. Uh, you're having uh, uh, actors. So they may not have the positive findings. Even if they don't have positive findings, uh, what you're going to do, you will still be verbalizing the negative findings that I'm looking for redness, any swelling or any uh, shiny skin pigmentation. So that's the main thing, right? So when you're doing the inspection, make sure you do very good inspection as well, because there are chances that you may get lots of inspectory finding, whether it is diabetes or if it is acute limb ischemia or peripheral artery disease scenario, right? So you have to do the inspection from the front, from the back, dorsum area, plantar area. You need to check the toes for any amputation because that's important in diabetes and you need to check between the toes as well. So what are the main things you're checking in between the toes? You're checking for the fungal infection, for example. Right, so he he you're checking for what you're checking for any pressure ulcers, for example. Right, so you have to do the proper proper inspection, and there are might there are chances you might get something on inspection as well. Now you might be thinking how because they are actors. But the thing is, for example, hair loss. They might shave one of the leg to give you hair loss. They might put. Um, too much too, too, too much of moisturizer on one leg to make it uh, shinier than the other one. So these things can happen. Mostly no, but uh, if it happens you can still manage it. So that's your inspection. Then you have got the palpation as well. So in the palpation, uh, whatever things we have got, you have got the temperature. So make sure you're using the back of your hand to check the temperature. And you know, sometimes what happens is that some of us, our hands are always cold, isn't it? I think uh, some of you might be having, uh, and your hands are always cold. So what you can do, so maybe just uh, warm up your hands a bit before you actually start the station, right? That would be good as well. So check for temperature, go for tenderness as well. Tenderness, whenever you're doing, uh, uh, first of all, you're doing in one leg at a time. You cannot do both the legs together because if patient has got pain, you don't know which leg patient has got the pain. And then you may have to do it again and you will be giving the pain again to the patient, which is not a good idea. All right, so that's really important as well. And while doing tenderness, you always make sure you keep looking at the patient's face for any kind of tenderness. That's really important. Then you check for the pulses as well. You check for distal pulses. You check for posterior tibial. You check for dorsalis pedis. So you check for dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses as well. I know if it is exam and if they have got uh, actors, they will definitely be having the pulses. But if they're giving these kind of station in a sim man, for example, acute limb ischemia can come as a sim man. And uh, in that particular scenario, you may not be able to find the pulse because patient has got absent pulses as well. But if it is actor, obviously, I don't think so. They'll be bringing a patient who's not even having the distal pulses, yeah? And then you check for the capillary ripple time as well. So these are four things you can do in palpation, your temperature, tenderness, pulses, and uh, capillary ripple time. And this is your inspection and palpation. Then we go for neurological examination, right? Neurological examination, you have got sensory examination and you have got motor examination. Sensory examination, you have got fine touch, you have got pain touch, you have got vibration and you have got joint position sense, which we say proprioception, right? So you've got fine pain, vibration and proprioception. Then you have got the motor examination as well. Motor examination, you will check for the bulb, you'll check for the tone, you'll check for the power, you'll check for the reflexes as well. All right, so this is how you're gonna do. But 
Now the question is, if I have to do everything, I mean, if it is, uh, <clears throat> say, coming as a teaching station, so yes, I can do the whole examination as well, which is not a big deal. And uh, if I'm doing the whole examination, including inspection, palpation, and the full neurological examination, uh, what do you think? How long it's going to take? It is really time consuming. It is really a time consuming process. You cannot just do it in a minute or two. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. If I say it is going to take like five to six minutes of your time. Yeah, that's true. If you do the practice, if you're practicing it again and again, doing it again and again, you will see, you'll feel more comfortable, right? And then what's going to happen is then it's going to be like difficult. So how much time you can spend? You cannot spend more than three, four minutes for examination, right? So now what we need to do, let's discuss the scenario. So like what kind of scenarios, I mean, you should be doing, yeah? Inspection, palpation, neurological. Let's have a look at one of the scenarios. <clears throat> you are in GP surgery, patient is 52, has come for his diabetic annual review. He was diagnosed with diabetes and he was on insulin. Examination has been done by the nurse. The patient has been seen by the optician. Endoscopy has been done, which shows dots and blots. Urine test has been done, which shows glucose is there and protein is there. Blood pressure is 13070, BMI is 30. Talk to the patient, do the diabetic annual review, and discuss the initial management with the patient. Right? So discuss the initial management plan. Okay. So what do you do when patient comes for diabetic annual review? So you know what are the things we do. So this is your diabetic annual review chart. Okay, are they gonna give you this chart in the exam? The answer is most probably no. So what we do in diabetic annual review, you check three months blood sugar, your HbA1c. You do check your blood pressure, the patient's blood pressure. You check the cholesterol level, you check the kidney function, you check the BMI, you do the eye examination, you do the foot examination, you do check injection sites if your patient is on insulin, okay? Just to see why we check for insulin, I mean, if patient is on insulin, just to see if there is any uh, infection, inflammation, uh, cellulitis and all in the, in, the, in the area where you are injecting insulin, okay? So that kind of scenario you might get. Now, if you see the question, I mean, in this, uh, fundoscopy has been done. So fundoscopy is done. Patient BMI is given to us as well. Blood pressure is given as well. Urine test is given as well. So a lot of things in terms of examination and investigation has been given to us already. Okay. So what are we supposed to do in this? First of all, you take history, isn't it? So in this station, what are you going to do? You need to elaborate on the diabetes. You ask for how long you are diabetic. How are you controlling it? Is it very well managed? Do you check it regularly? When was the last time you checked? What was the reading? Whether it was before me, after me? Do you have any symptoms of diabetes? Do you have any complication of diabetes? Symptoms, polyuria, polyphagia, polydipsia. Then you have the complication, you have micro, macrovascular complications as well, like any eye problem, numbness, tingling in the legs or heart, chest pain or a, a kidney problem. So these are the questions that you can ask, right? Makes sense. Now, what else you can ask? You can uh, ask the patient if the patient has attended all the diabetic annual reviews or not. Diabetic annual review, the name is in, in, enough. Annual means it's done annually. So if patient has diabetics, let's say for last 10 years, you can ask, uh, I mean, if you have attended all your annual reviews or not, because we know diabetes can cause a lot of complication. That's why we call the patient for diabetic annual review to see if something has already started uh, in the patient or not, any complication. So we can prevent the further damage of that particular problem, right? So that's the main aim. Then quickly what you do, you go for uh, past medical history as well. Which medical conditions we are mainly looking for? We're looking for high blood pressure. We are looking for any kidney problem. We are looking for any uh, cholesterol problem as well. So these are the questions that you can ask. Uh, what do you think uh, about the lifestyle history? Is it important or not? I would say it is very important. Yeah. So you go for lifestyle history as well, like smoking, the diet, physical activity. All those things are very, very, very important. Yeah. So that's your history. So can I do this history in three minutes? Of course, yes. Why not? So, for example, this patient gave me the history that uh, in the legs, I don't have any problem. I don't feel any numbness. I don't feel any tingling sensation. I feel absolutely okay. 
Okay. And then I've got the findings for the I, I've got the finding for the urine test, BP, blood pressure, and BMI. Okay. <clears throat> so if you see the diabetic and will chart, and if you see this question, the question is not saying that you have to do lower limb examination. This question simply says, patient has come for diabetic annual review. And we know what are the things we do in diabetic annual review. And if you see the question, a lot of things have been done. What is the thing which is not done is a lower limb examination. Moreover, when you enter into the cubicle, what you see, you have got a couch. Patient is actually lying down on the couch. What else you have got? You have got all the instruments that you need for lower limb examination in the cubicle. So what does it mean? It is a lower limb neurological examination scenario. Okay. So what do you do? Then you will do lower limb examination. Okay. So I've already spent three minutes in the history. And as I said, if I have to do the full examination, it might take five to six minutes. I don't have that much of time. I have got only three minutes. What I should be doing. Now, this patient was diabetic for the last 5-10 years. What do you think? Inspection is important in this patient or not? I would say inspection is uh, definitely important. I can't afford to miss the inspection because diabetic patient, high chances you might get something positive for uh, in the inspection. Yeah. Then it comes to palpation. What do you think? Palpation is important or not? So in palpation, you're having... Uh, your uh, temperature, tenderness, distal pulses, and capillary refill time. Are we going to do it or not? I would say yes, because diabetic patient uh, having cellulitis, that's been very important. And if patients have got cellulitis, they can have tenderness as well. Pulses, diabetic patient can have absent pulses as well. So it's very, very important. I can't afford to miss palpation part. So I, I did inspection, I did palpation. It took maybe two minutes of my time already. Now, now the question is, uh, we're having a patient who's having diabetes. So I have to do the neurological examination now, which is sensory and motor. So if this patient is not having any problem in the limbs at the moment, which is good. So if any complication has to come in terms of lower limb complication, sensory findings are going to come first or motor findings are going to come first in this patient who is, who is diabetic. I would simply say, sensory finding should be coming first. Yeah, that's the main thing. So what I'll do, I'll start doing the sensory examination. I started with the fine touch. What happened when I did fine touch? I would start with neurological examination. In the neurological, I'll start with sensory. In sensory, I'll start with fine touch. And what I found when I did the examination, I found patient has got loss of fine sensation bilaterally below the midship. Okay, if you get time, which is uh, less likely, but let's say you did paint touch as well, and you got same findings in that as well. If there is loss of fine sensation bilaterally below the midship in this patient, what do you think? Is diabetes well controlled or not? The answer is no. Diabetes is not very well controlled. So, do I need to do the full examination? The answer is no. So, what you will do? You will simply go to the management. Right? So, what I'm going to do in this station, I'll do inspection, I'll do palpation, I'll do fine touch. If I have time, maybe paint touch as well. And that's it. I'll go to the management. That is the thing. Just say one line, ideally, I'll finish the lower limb neurological examination and please go to the management. If you do full examination, you will spend four or five minutes. There will not be any time for the management and it's impossible for you to pass that station. So you have to be very careful how you're going to go about it. Yeah. So you do sensories at the fine touch and that's it. What? That's the main thing. Yeah, <clears throat> so yes, so fine touch, paint touch, that's the main important thing. And how it is done, you can check in the, in the video on the YouTube as well. I've already shared the link. Yeah. Now, what is the management? So what do you think the management would be in this case? So the management is, will tell the patient that your diabetes is not very, con very well controlled. I've done the examination. I found there are loss of fine sensation or pain sensation below this particular level, which actually proves that you do not have uh, uh, 
the very well good control over diabetes. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the investigation. Which investigation? I'm going to check your random blood sugar. I'm going to check your three months blood sugar. I'm going to do kidney function, cholesterol level, all those things, right? And once I have the report, I'll be making some changes in your medication as well. I'll be doing the changes in the medication as well, right? And if you got, uh, because you already took the lifestyle history as well, if something was positive in the lifestyle, you will uh, manage it as well in the end. All right, uh, that's it. That's it. That's the only thing you do, right? This patient uh, will be asking maybe one question. Doctor, am I going to lose my life? Am I going to lose my life? I can see you are concerned. Always acknowledge the emotions. Ask the patient why this concern came in your mind. Actually, one of my friends actually lost his life because he was having diabetes. Okay. Uh, the thing is, I can see you are concerned, but then if we have got good control over diabetes, we can prevent these kinds of complications from happening. See, this is one of the complications which you mentioned, but it can be prevented we can stop the progression of the disease if we have got good control over the diabetes. There are a few things that you can do. There are a few things we can do for you. What you can do, a good control over the diabetes. What I can do, I can give you some medication. We can review medication. But then your job is to be compliant with that medication. So that's how it is It is done. Now, who's going to change the medication? You don't need to worry. First of all, you need to send the investigation. And then the, based on those investigations only, the specialist can make the changes. We are an FY2. I don't think so. We'll be taking that responsibility. All right. So that's how you're going to do this uh, lower limb examination. So the thing is...